Good morning, this is George Love. I'm uh, recording a module today on how to import JPG or PNG files to Esprit. Most images uh, on the internet come in raster format. That's a series of small dots. Uh, you might view them as pixels. You might think of them as, um, again, just a series of non-connected dots. If you were to zoom in on those, you would find that uh, there's more and more gaps between them the further down you go, as opposed to a vector which is a series of clean straight lines with sharp edges and they all show some connectivity. Um, they've got link, they've got a stopping and starting points, they work as a line within their systems. So what we're going to do today is um, we're going to look for a um, image that is in JPG or PNG format and you can use PDF as well and we're going to import that into a spree and then use that as a line drawing to make a toolpath. So we're going to find a JPG, PNG, or PDF format, and we're going to download it to the desktop as an image. My grandson right now uh, loves Bendy, and so I'm going to um, show what this looks like with Bendy's head. Um, and I'm going to find something that's appropriate for work, hopefully. Um, and I'm just looking for the headshot on this one, so that one looks pretty good. Um, and I use DeviantArt um, in some cases to, to do this. So I'm going to save that as, no, it's a PNG file. I'm going to call this one just Bindi. And I've already, obviously already done this once. I don't remember if it's the same file or not. I'm going to call this one Bindi 2. And I'm getting out of here before somebody sues me. Uh, the next thing is I'm going to load up autotracer.org, converts raster images to vector images. There are others out there. This one is just very reliable. I've had good luck with it, so I've been using it. Um, I'm going to load the image. I'm going to choose the file, and I call this one Bindi2. It looks like it's the same one. Um, and then I'm going to select an output of DXF. That is the AutoCAD format, but and it's a portable format, but AutoCAD is, to my knowledge, the originator of it. Um, instead of no reduction, I'm going to try two colors. Um, I don't want a lot of color differentiation in there. Two colors seems to work the best for what we've been doing in, in uh, this version of Esprit. I'm going to show advanced options and I'm going to set smoother, uh, smoothing to smoother, which means that it will try to blend as many of those pixels into a solid line as it can. It'll be sort of a yes-no format, not, not 256 shades of gray. I'll set despeckle to active and I've I've had good luck with both white and ignore, so I'm going to ignore this time. And I'm just going to start it. You can see it's very quick. Um, I don't like some of those lines coming out, but I'm going to go on and try it. I've called this one Bindi 2. I'm going to, now that's all my, I've saved that to my desktop, so I'm going to go back down to Esprit and I'm going to open up Bindi 2. No correction. I am going to file, open, options, and I'm going to import um, AutoCAD files. Not just open, but import. And there I see Bindi 2, DXF. And let's look at it. It looks pretty good. You can see that I've got some... If I zoom in on it, it seems to be one line. And normally I find that if I can click a segment and it picks it all up. I should have no problem doing this, but I will zoom in on, on this area right here. Um, you can see it did not it did not cleanly import those, and I suspect that is because I chose ignore uh, white background. I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to tell it no, don't save it. I'm going to go back to my file here, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to choose a Bindi. I'm going to choose the original Bindi image. I'm going to import DXF smoother, and I'm going to ignore the white background. I don't want to do anything with the white background this time. And I'm going to bring up a um, Bindi 3. DXF. I'm going to go into a spree. I'm going to open options, import all DXF files. And I find Bindi 3 on here now. And I find that if I don't, uh, I don't choose anything with the background, it does not seem to have a problem with it. 
Notice that all of my lines, with the exception of this corner, they seem to be very clean and neat. I'm going to zoom in down here. You can see it looks like one continuous line, but here's the acid test. I'm going to um, select everything in here, and I'm going to um, auto chain. And as you can see, it's struggling to auto chain. There's a lot of information on there. So it is struggling to auto chain that. You can see it's not responding. It's still thinking about getting this done. Came up with 25 total chains. So if I don't want some of these chains, like this outside line on the box on the outside, um, I'm just going to get rid of it. got some funny little sections in there, but that's okay. It did all the work for me so quickly. I really don't think I have any room to complain about it, and it's not really um, in a good order. I would have had the uh, I need to optimize this to keep that toolpath all together, but in general, I'm very pleased with it. I think it came in very neatly, and I can generate it. Uh, I can pick a tool and generate a toolpath immediately with that, and um, I'll give it a shot later and see how that comes out. So that's that was my um, that was my attempt to pick a um, JPG, PNG, and bring it in. Now, and obviously it worked very well. Now, here's one of the tricks to it. This came in in a very large format. I'm going to show you how much my actual um, box that I'll be using is actually two by three. And so I'm going to say that it's two inches high. Nope. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to say that the box that I want is two inches high. And I'm going to say that it is three inches wide. Um, three inches wide. And I want to point out how tiny that is right there. That little box, all of this needs to fit inside that box. So what I'm going to do is pick it all. And I'm going to copy and scale. And it, it did this print for me. So I had 25 chains originally. I'm going to get rid of all of those. And that leaves me with nothing but um, this, this bottom corner. All of this still needs to fit in, in, there, in there, and so I just need to go back to, um, I need to continue to scale that stuff down. Now, I don't need those lines. I'm going to deselect those lines, and I'm going to scale again. And I'm going to get rid of 25, or 26 through 50, and I'm going to go on and get rid of all of this as well. And I'm going to zoom into that corner. I'll have to redraw my lines now because I'm not very bright about um, uh, getting rid of those. And you can see my process again. So all of Bindi needs to fit down inside that um, uh, box right there. You can see there were a bunch of little sections of this. But I'm still going to do the same thing. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to do it one more time. I'm going to scale down. Finally, 
got it down into an area that I can use and I'll be able to just expand this up now. I'm going to shift it over a little bit. I'm going to translate it. And shift it over um, 0.5 and X. Too far. And I'm in the range now. So if I want to describe this into my Canon carriage, this is about what it would look like. All right. I'm going to um, stop this video. I'm going to show you the finished product once I'm done. But this was how to import a file in JPG, PNG, or PDF, convert it to vectors, and then put it into a smallish box here.